salutations. Hope this finds you all in good health. Um, <clears throat> something I want to talk about today briefly is USOs and underwater bases, but more specifically USOs, under, underwater submerged objects. And how much I think that that isn't addressed enough, considering that you have places like Palos Verdes in California, that there appears to be a base there, and places in Puerto Rico, you see all this activity going on, and that that is the perfect place for any species to hide from our normal civilization. And also, when thinking of something like what the doggone said about the Nomo, if you really think about what the tribal elder told the guy in the series Mystery, he talked about how when the Nomo came here, immediately they hit, they, their ship went down into the water, went down into, into, the, into the water, and then they emerged later. So that's also a reason to address aquatic beings. I've done another video on the channel underneath the playlist, look at the playlist of this channel always, underneath um, extraterrestrial interdimensional beings. I did one about the aquatics, like the mer people and different beings that have been seen of that nature. But they're all going to be ones that are going to want to be sea-based. You know, even if it comes down to something like, uh, I always think of that movie Splash where Daryl Hannah at the end took Tom Hanks down to this. It was a city down there. It was all lit up. <laughs> I've had a contact with a being named uh, Oshar. It's another video on Patreon that uh, had so, so, showed me something similar in terms of a crystalline city in a, on a different planet. Anyway, uh, undersea. Anyway, um, going back to these USOs, and something I kind of wanted to touch on a little bit to expand our modalities of contact, and that is that when dealing with these more advanced civilizations, we've got some of them to do the miniaturization, all right? And I've described that before. These more advanced civilizations have done the same thing as we have, what is that called, the Brownian principle, where we start putting, I think, I might be wrong on that, but it's where they put more transistors on a microchip uh, every year, and it becomes smaller and smaller. But we start dealing with that in these civilizations that have become, you know, not just micro, but uh, nano and also pico as well. That's a whole other thing going on and the way of contact they would make. So when dealing with these USOs, I want those of you that are contactees to be aware. It may be a small body of water or ponds you're at and you see not all these craft are huge ones or big ones we're going to see coming up like the ones you see are going down like the ones you're seeing on YouTube. It might be ones that are much more fine. I've seen ones come out of the water that look like glitter. It kind of looks like glitter. Like there's several craft and for all that I know inside of those are like something like the Enterprise. It could be hundreds of beings for that size. Who knows? But it's another way of dealing with contact and with dealing with awareness. So think about that when dealing with these USOs. It doesn't just have to be seen over the ocean or over the Great Lakes. It could be a small pond. I've even had reports of this happening over people's swimming pools. And this takes us into something else, one of the pictures I'll put up, which is how some of these craft actually suck up uh, orgone life energy, actually life energy from water, and then convert that process into not just a power source, but also into an anti-gravity field that they release around the shield, around the suit, sorry, excuse me, around the skin of the craft, actually. So that's uh, something else. These are things I've addressed in other videos, but I think this is just pulling them together. So look at the aquatics video, aquatic extraterrestrials. Look at all the orgone videos I've done that describe propulsion, a type of propulsion. I use the, the word orgone because it's life energy they're using. And I've done talked about that on several videos. So check those things out. And um, also the amphibious, I think, aspect of this also. And the different types of beings we're dealing with that might be aquatic on this planet. So um, Preston did it. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of respect for his work. And I've mentioned him several times. You know, he's got a book under underwater bases that is really, really good. Really good. And um, most of his books, he's got so many out, it's unreal. So anyway, this is food for thought only, all right? Talking about USOs and how some of them use that gravitational modified gravitational feel to actually enter the water. That's why they don't splash. 
So that's again, you know, even a little beyond anti-gravity, it's gravity modification. Why they're not splashing, how they're able to maneuver underwater just like they do outside of it. So, you know, more food for thought and also the portals in the sea and the portals within water. I think there may be more numerous than the ones that are in the atmosphere. Food for thought again, all right? You've got a lot of beings that I think are using portals in the water. So, uh, thank you very much for, please press the subscribe. Please hit the bell so you know I put on something different out or put something new out. Thank you for the people on Patreon and all the people commenting and saying I'm getting a lot of nice comments too. That's nice to see the other side of that. Thank you for that. Please keep talking to each other, communicating. That's what it's all about. It's making this tapestry. Thank you. Peace. God bless you.